See, there's something within us that wants to leave a legacy. But here's the thing you need to know is if God asks you to do something, don't look at the size of the job. Look at the size of your God who asked you to do it. See, he laid down his life for you, so that tells me that you are not worthless, you are worthy. And this is what he wants to rewrite into your story. That reality impacts everything. Well, welcome to week four of Say What? Super excited that you guys are with us as we're looking at these shocking statements that Jesus said, or in this case, for this week, it's a shocking event that really took place at the very beginning of Jesus's life. We could say even before Jesus, but it was uh, the event with, with Mary and how that all unfolded. Um, because it was Mother's Day, I just gave Lisa the most wonderful gift of preaching this weekend. And um, so I'm going to let her just kind of guide us through our conversation here. Uh, on, and we'll hit some of these subjects and some of these uh, highlighted moments from the weekend. So Lisa, take it away. Yeah, so we kind of lobbed up this question. What if the result of you saying yes to God is that he, through you, leaves an impact on eternity? That's exactly what happened to Mary. She was this young 12 to 14 year old girl who said yes to carrying the son of God. She was um, a virgin and pregnant. Those two hardly ever go together. So her story Hardly. Is, yeah. Hardly. Sometimes, but hardly. <laughs> well, and nowadays it can happen. <laughs> but back then, yeah. it was unheard of. Um, this, the Holy Spirit would come upon her and she would conceive. And that's, we read that in Luke. Yeah. And so this, this uh, week, uh, Lisa went through kind of Luke chapter one, uh, verse 26 through 38. We're not going to read it right now. Um, I would encourage you in your small groups to read that. But kind of three main points that Lisa made. The first one was this observation of how God's favor is sometimes really perplexing. In verse 28 and verse 30, 28 says this, you are highly favored. In verse 30, uh, it says, Mary, you found favor with God. So once again, this is God's favor, but God's favor is going to feel pretty strange for Mary because there's nothing logical or easy about what she's facing. So Lisa, talk through a little bit about uh, that element, once again, of God's favor being perplexing. So it's easy for us to look at her this far back, 2,000 years later, and know that she is this revered woman, this mother of Jesus. But back in that day, she would have endured quite a lot of hardship as a young girl mm -hmm. to be pregnant. She was engaged to Joseph, and her saying yes, put that all in jeopardy. She might have lost that security. Um, sometimes God's favor doesn't feel or look like blessing. For example, we have nine kids and we know the Bible tells us that they are a gift from the Lord. Sometimes having nine kids is a challenge. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's draining and it's tiring. Sometimes we don't know what to do with nine children but yet we know it is the favor and it is the blessing of the Lord. Yeah, so even as you're in your small groups, as you think about how God's favor can sometimes be perplexing, let me throw up a question for you. Um, are there areas in your life that you know uh, is God's favor, but has challenges that are attached to that? And what does that look like as you, as you think about that? Then Lisa took it into... Um, Mary's response, kind of two other observations throughout mm -hmm. or over the weekend, um, Mary's response is a shocking and really amazing and beautiful response and something that we can learn from. Uh, her first kind of observation was this, uh, how, how Mary responds with, I am your servant. Mm -hmm. And this is all a position of authority and how Mary is saying, I'm not going to rule my life. I'm not going to take the authority. I am going to serve. And so Lisa, mm -hmm. talk a little bit about uh, some of the things you covered. Yeah, so I just, I feel like how on earth can this 13-year-old girl say, I'm your servant? Like she knows her position. She knows that God is God and she is not. She knows that she is here to serve the Lord and she's willing to do so. Um, sometimes it's the question of who sits on the throne of your heart. Josh had talked last week about guarding your heart above all else. And I found there have been seasons of my life where what was on the throne of my heart was not the Lord. Mm. For example, um, when we had just had the twins, just two little kids, we were in Joliet doing ministry, and Josh had the brilliant idea of moving right into the ghetto, into the heart of Joliet, the worst part of town, the worst street, 
terrible schools and saying, hey, we need to be in the heart of that to be able to minister. And I said, nope, 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 nope. There was no way I was going to do that. It was dangerous for our two little kids. It was risky. And I realized, though, because my response was so fast, what was clear is that safety and security sat on the throne of my heart. I checked all my decisions, all those big decisions with, is it safe, is it secure, rather than is this what the Lord has for me? Is this what the Lord wants? Yeah. Yeah, and that's uh, that whole piece of being able to just respond with, I am your servant, really does. It checks who's ruling over your heart. So in your small groups, maybe you can think of it through this question, this lens. Was there ever a time that you made a decision where you didn't consult the Lord because you were serving some other desire or some other ambition? in your life. Uh, and then final third observation over the weekend was this idea of once again, found in Mary's response. First, she says, I'm your se servant. Mm -hmm. Then she says, um, may it be as you have said. And this is just amazing because this is her basically saying, okay, let's go. Mm -hmm. it's, it's Let's take the first step and move forward. And so Lisa, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. I love it. Cause it's her saying, giving permission, saying now's the time. I feel like sometimes it's easy for us as Christians to have hear the dream of the Lord or hear the call of the Lord on our heart. And yet we go, yes, Lord, I'm your servant, but I would like to dictate the timeline of that. I would like to dictate um, all the things I have to have in a row, ready to go before I am ready to take that step. Um, we say, yes, Lord, but not today. Hmm. Yes, Lord, but not today. So I feel like sometimes we have that servant heart but we aren't willing to submit to his authority and his timeline. So she says, may it be to me as you have said, as your plan is, as you see this, not the way I would dictate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, let's go. If you say so, yep, I'm in. <laughs> let's make this thing happen yep. then, yep. which is pretty amazing. And, and as you were talking about this whole deal of, I think we have the good intention or the right intention and we're say that we're in, but it's taking that first step. Mm -hmm. um, it could look like something like this, where you go, I want to lead my families and my family and maybe devotions um, and just kind of a quiet time uh, daily. And you'd say, I'm, I'm all in, but you just never take that first step. Or I want to mm -hmm. pray with my spouse. You have a conviction to do that, but you never take that first step. Or, uh, or you know, you need to forgive someone or write mm -hmm. them a letter that lets them off the hook or even ask for forgiveness. Yeah. Um, and you're like, I, I already have the conviction. I already know I should do this. You're just not taking that first step. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's inviting someone to church or telling them your story mm -hmm. of how God has worked in your life. Um, and so I just, I think there's a lot of us who can relate with Mary in the sense that we have the conviction, but maybe we don't take that same amazingly shocking first step to say, mm -hmm. okay, here we go, let's let's go. And so in your small groups, uh, what thing has the Lord placed on your heart that you're putting off taking the first step toward? Um, maybe it's because once again, you have this little bit of fear, mm -hmm. timidity, and um, you, you agree with God, you're just not taking that first step in obedience. And so this week, it's really all about this amazing, bold mm -hmm. step of how Mary's story is rewritten. She has a whole different storyline than I'm sure than what she had dreamt mm -hmm. growing up as a young girl. Mm -hmm. um, probably nothing that she'd ever imagined, but the story that God wrote in her life was um, I think she would say it was far better than what she had in mind, but it's because she was willing to do something completely shocking. She was willing to ultimately say, God, your, your favor might look perplexing, but I'm all in. I'll be your servant and I'll take the first step. So for you guys this week, God's favor might look perplexing, um, but it's good. And because of that, uh, you know that you can take that first step and you can serve him in it. So enjoy your conversations and we'll see you guys next week.